biggest points of contention in the metal community is the concept of blacklisted albums, what constitutes an album getting blacklisted, and the public response to that within the community itself. In this video, I'm going to give you my personal philosophy and stance when it comes to blacklisted albums, and in this video, I'm going to specifically be referring and talking a lot about Discogs, which is a place where you can get just about any musical release, no matter if it's metal or otherwise, and I feel like that is the best representation of this, considering they are also the target of a lot of heavy criticism for the records that throughout the years they have blacklisted, whether it be metal or otherwise. Just assume that any point that I make about Discog, I hold that philosophy towards any sort of label that takes this stance. It goes a little bit without saying, but when it comes to blacklisted records, it usually is cherry-picked. There isn't some concrete definition of what can constitute getting a record blacklisted or not. And in the case of Discogs, things have been blacklisted for any host of reason, whether it be things being banned because it's severely anti-Muslim or anti-religious, most of the time that won't prevent you from being up on things, but very harsh examples that very much can get you taken down. And Wyatt XM's video that he did a while back talked about how like they crack down on bootlegs a lot of times, but notoriously from a metal department, the biggest reason that things can oftentimes get blacklisted is if they are inherently NSBM in nature. National Socialist Black Metal, Xenophobic or racist or anti-Semitic, whatever you want to call it, NSBM notoriously will get blacklisted from Discogs as well as many other places and be frowned upon if you carry those things. I have always held the opinion that you cannot separate the art from the artist all the time, but most of the time you are being hypocritical if you solely don't want to listen to something because it doesn't align with you. Because if you cherry pick the world, there are so many things that you don't agree with that you make exceptions for. And when it comes to music, most of the time, I don't give a shit. If I enjoy it, I'm going to listen to it. Does that mean I'm going to agree with the ideology? No. And most of the time, from my own accord, I'm not going to go out of my way to just pursue and listen to a ton of stuff that is adamantly against the stuff that I believe in, but it has nothing to do with the music or the artists themselves. It's more so just a personal belief and philosophy that I have and in no way should be a reflection of how other people approach it. Am I for or against the blacklisting of a certain album? Yes and no. The yes side of me says that if you own a company or you own something that distributes records, that you have every right if something does not align with you or you think something is too extreme that you do not want it to represent the business that you're running, you have every right and should have every right to take that away, to invalidate that, and to let people go somewhere else and do it. Because I do not think that it is impeaching on any sort of free speech for something to necessarily be censored if a business chooses to not have that be part of their repertoire. Free speech being denied is if there was laws or if there was regulations on the internet that said no one can carry it. You can't get it from anywhere. No secondhand places. No one is allowed to carry it. Every single business and company should have the ability to choose what they want to represent their business model and what they want to be able to be purchased from their website. The no side of me is the free spirit in me that says, fuck it, let people listen to whatever they want to listen to. People are going to have different interpretations of the same thing. People are going to have different worldviews. And regardless of if it is damaging or destructive or could hurt someone either verbally, physically, whatever, or incite this, that, or the other thing, who the fuck cares? Live and let live. Let it be up there. Because I think the big reason that I am against it is because oftentimes when something is denied and when like a record is not allowed to be on Discogs or any other place, the prices will be jacked up. People will buy stuff if they think it's going to get blacklisted and then secondhand sell it for three, four, five plus times the value, the initial value of it, and skyrocket the prices because they'll form this little monopoly and since there aren't multiple places that you can get it and it's not regulated through Discogs, which is a more reasonable place to distribute stuff, you're obviously going to run the risk that if you like more underground stuff or you like something that maybe is NS or is something that got blacklisted for some reason, you might be having to pay upwards of a hundred plus dollars for a record that usually maybe would have ran you 20, 30, 40. It's when you deny and limit the amount that you can find a certain record or the amount of resources that you have to come in contact with it, automatically that's going to make the price go up since the people who have it are going to be able to charge whatever the fuck they want because if you are a record collector or if you are a big fan of whatever band or artist falls under that category, you are going to be forced to pay that if you want that record. But to the people that say that like 
blacklisting records is inherently censorship and anti-free speech. Fuck off with that shit, miss me with it. I think that's the, the, the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No one's denying you free speech. No one's invalidating your ability to choose shit. You can just go somewhere else. Do I agree with the fact that things are skyrocketed? Absolutely not. I don't really support that. But most of the time, if something is on Discogs, if it gets blacklisted, you can usually find some underground labels that sell it. There are plenty of labels that sort of fall under the NS category that distribute a lot of CDs, cassettes, and vinyls for the same bands and artists that get blacklisted to begin with. So it's not necessarily like it is always an all or nothing. You are paying reasonable prices or you are paying extremely absurd prices. As long as there are resources to be able to find stuff, no one is denying you that right to look. It's just the frustration that comes with people overtaking the market. It's just a matter of if you support and condone that sort of behavior because blacklisting records is always going to lead to that. When you ban something solely because it doesn't align with you, that is a very extremely slippery slope because as much as I despise NS and how I hate the themes of it and the way that they approach things in their worldview, that is a worldview that a lot of people have. Especially when you get into the nitty gritty of what do you define as NS? And it's just adamantly and obviously going against the norm of what our society sees as moral and righteous and trustworthy and kind and generous and just right. Because I'm not going to drop names, but I was researching like some blacklisted records going into this video just to sort of get a feel for what gets blacklisted and what doesn't. And there are some bands that are labeled as NS or have been blacklisted that I would genuinely argue may not fall under that category as hard as people might think. I fucking hate NSBM. I don't think I listen to like any major NSBM bands and it's just not something that I adopt much. But with that being said, people throw that term around willy nilly all the time and really misrepresent a lot of bands that just get a bad reputation compared to the actual destructive people who truly believe that philosophy and ideology. But I want to know what your guys' opinions are of blacklisted records. Do you agree with it? Do you not? You can let me know down below. I'd love to have a discussion with you. Agree or disagree. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying farewell. Well.